The right to have equal rights, equal opportunities, and equal education was a dream to many Mexican Americans, but one particular woman who stood out was no other than Jovita Idar. Hello, my name is Jovita Idar, and in my lifetime, I was a journalist, civil rights activist, teacher, and a nurse. I fought for equality for all Mexican Americans, especially when it came to education, as many children were sent to segregated schools and left with little to no resources to support their education. What led me to lead a life to fight for civil rights was the lynching of Mexican Americans, as many of my people perished due to this injustice. Jovita Idar was born on September 7, 1885, and daughter to Nicasio Idar and Jovita Vivero. She was born the second eldest of eight children. Her love of learning then led her to become an educator as she gained her teaching certificate in the summer of 1903, and later became a teacher at Abuelos. This served as a great accomplishment for Jovita as not many Mexican-American women could attend college because most schools only admitted Anglo students. When I taught at Ojuelos, I was devastated to learn that many of my students were not provided with proper materials, and I would see that many students would come to school hungry and dressed in rags. This discrimination in the school system made her quit her job and become a full-time activist to find a way to improve the lives of Tejano children as well as all Mexican Americans. After quitting her teaching job, she returned to Laredo and joined her father and two brothers at La Clonica, whose goals focused on progress, morals, and intellectual development of all Mexican Americans living in Texas. My hope in joining my father and my two brothers was to write about the prejudice many Tejano children were facing and to change this discrimination. I also wrote many articles about the lynchings that occurred here in Texas. In 1911, Jovita joined her father to form the Premier Congreso Mexicanista. This congress gathered many Mexican Americans to take action in the social injustice they faced during this time. Many influential Tejanos attended this congress, as well as journalists, teachers, Mexican consuls, and many more Mexican Americans who create change. Many Hispanic women attended the conference, such as Hortensio Macaya and Soledad de la Peña. On October 15, 1911, the first Hispanic feminist organization called La Liga Feminel Mexicanista was established. Jovita, Soledad, and nine other educated Hispanic women gathered and discussed how to better the life of Tejanos. We Hispanic feminists focused on the education and support that our women and children needed. Many of our members were good educators, so we provided a free kindergarten that taught both English and Spanish, along with Mexican culture. Not only were children welcome to our courses, but many Hispanic women who wanted an education were provided classes to learn about many subjects. In 1910, the Mexican Revolution spilled over many border towns, including Laredo, where Jovita lived during the time. A woman named Lenor Vegas woke up to gunshots. She and Jovita saw the wounded people and immediately treated their wounds. On May 18, 1913, Leonor and I took the initiative to create La Cruz Blanca, a hospital that was created inside Leonor's schoolhouse to help those in need of first aid during this war. After a year of nursing the wounded, I left my nursing duties to once again pursue my life as an editor, but this time with a newspaper called El Progreso. Soon after joining this newspaper, I heard the news of President Wilson's decision to send U.S. troops to the Mexican border. I angrily wrote my thoughts of President Wilson's decision and happily published it, but I soon learned that my article angered many U.S. authorities, including the Texas Rangers. They then came to El Progreso and threatened to destroy the building. BE GONE! But I stood my ground and stared the strong authority who was feared by many, and after several hours, they finally left. My victory was of course short-lived, as the rangers came later that night and arrested my remaining staff and destroyed everything, stopping us for good. It was after many years dedicating a life to civil rights that her body eventually gave out and she died of diabetes and tuberculosis on June 13, 1946 in San Antonio, Texas at the age of 60. Jovita Idad was a woman who stood hard for her beliefs and despite the many prejudices she faced in her lifetime, she created change for her Mexican-American people and helped shape a better future for many.